Unity updated their UI tools, Boston Dynamics' new robot is straight out of The Exorcist, someone made Joker into an open world game, people keep asking about Silksong, and more. Today is the 21st of April 2024, and you're watching the Game Dev Report. Starting off with the Unity AI update, as of now, all five Muse capabilities are now usable directly inside the engine. You can generate textures and you can generate sprites. You now also have access to the privileges of the Animate. This tool lets you generate animations from text prompts and Behavior, which lets you generate behavior trees for doing things like enemy AI. And Muse Chat is also now available directly in the editor, which brings with it one huge bonus. Now it is project aware. I'm extremely curious to try out all these tools. Animate sounds very useful, and Muse Chat, being project aware, makes it sound like it's insanely useful for doing things like debugging or project brainstorm. They also published a GDC talk all about doing AI inference directly on device. That sounds like a really interesting topic, so I'm definitely going to watch it. And for non-AI news, they put out a really nice, really interesting 48-minute tutorial all about their game Happy Harvest, which is made using URP. It goes through how to model new crops in Blender, how to create textures and normal maps, how to set up the lights, set up the prefabs, and even work with UI toolkit. Yet another awesome thing is the updated URP and AGRP ebooks. These are completely free and contain a mountain of information. They are literally over 300 pages long. These are super detailed, super in-depth, so if you want to learn anything about how rendering works, I definitely recommend you give this a look. One developer has reimagined the movie Joker in Unreal Engine 5 as a sort of open world game, although calling it open world game is a little bit of a stretch. There's no real gameplay, it's just visuals and animations. But for that, it is absolutely gorgeous. They have perfectly recreated a bunch of environments directly from the movie. These feature some insanely high-end textures, insanely high-quality lighting. More than anything, this actually showcased the power of today's tools. From what I can see, this was all done just by a single developer, so really impressive. Warren Spector says that the next logical step for immersive sims is multiplayer. The game director that worked on games like Ultima, System Shock, and Deus Ex believes that by using multiplayer, it can lead to more player-authored scenarios. So basically the kind of experience that you can create with tabletop games. His studio, Other Side Entertainment, is currently working on a game titled Thick as Thieves. It's a thief versus thief immersive simulator game where players have to compete with each other in order to steal some artifacts and see who makes the most out of this open environment. It sounds really interesting in theory, although making an immersive sim in multiplayer sounds like quite the challenge. I would say the main difference between making something like a video game versus something like Dungeons and Dragons, the main difference is the lack of a game master. So this is actually one scenario where AI might be really useful in games. Having an AI with context of the game itself generate some really interesting scenarios on the fly that could be a really interesting experience. So if you're looking for your next prototype to try out this weekend, maybe give that idea a try. In a bit of nice news, the devs for Playdate have collectively earned over $500,000. That's over 150,000 copies sold. That's a really very nice amount for what is a very niche device. The Playdate is a tiny, physical, handheld device with a really strange crank. All the games are built specifically for this device. These types of niche things can sometimes be really useful for indie devs. Even though you might not sell a million copies, just the fact that there is so much less competition, there's only a handful of developers, just that might help you stand out. Although, of course, getting on these devices also is one of the things that requires lots of networking. So it can be tricky to get in, but if you do get in, it can have some nice bonuses. Over on Reddit, there's two really awesome postmortems. One is on the game Stellar Settlers, which is a colony building sim with a really nice, really chill vibe. On Steam, it has over 200 very positive reviews, and according to the developer, has sold 10,000 copies and generated 70,000 in gross revenue. They launched into early access with 36,000 wishlists. It was made quickly in just six months with a team of about four people. And on the other side, we have Minami Lane. This is a tiny, cozy street management game with some very calming vibes. A three-person team built this game over the course of six months. It's already got 1,500 reviews. They have sold over 50,000 copies, which equals over $200,000 in gross revenue. This one launched with 50,000 wishlists. The wishlist count actually started off strong right away. Nowadays, visuals are extremely important, so having a game that looks visually interesting and has a unique concept, just that alone can push a game to the top right from the very beginning. And then, of course, it completely blew up during Steam Next Fest. These two, I think, are really great examples of how we can build something really awesome in just six months, so you don't have to spend three to four years making your very first indie game. My advice is always make smaller projects as opposed to really big ones. Okay, so now let's move on to the tech news. Boston Dynamics has unveiled their latest iteration of their Atlas robot. They made a video showcasing all of the iterations to get to this point. It's really awesome, it's really quite incredible how far robotics has come in just a handful of years. The new Atlas has no hydraulics, it's only electric motors. This is their most advanced robot yet. One huge benefit of that is how it has no limitations in terms of movement. Some people think this becomes quite a little bit creepy, quite a little bit like The Exorcist, but it certainly makes sense that robots should not inherently have all of the regular limb limitations that human beings have. By having none of those limitations, it gives it an insane amount of freedom. 
In alternate universe, if I hadn't gotten into game dev, I would have loved to explore robotics, so personally I find this really fascinating. And now a quick message from our sponsor, which is me. If you want to learn how to make games or make websites, if you want to learn robotics, electronics, or just about anything, if so, then learning C-sharp is a super useful skill you can learn for free right now over here on YouTube with my C-sharp course. You can watch the free videos or get the premium version, which includes interactive exercises and a ton of other bonuses to help you learn by doing. Check it out to the link in the description. The MetaQuest 2 got a permanent price cut to $199. Price is still one of the main barriers for VR adoption, so I think this is great news. At this price point, hopefully it will increase the size of the audience for VR games, which will hopefully allow developers to make bigger VR games with a higher budget and still make it work. Technically, the Quest 2 has since been surpassed by the Quest 3, but it's still a really excellent device. It's the main one that I have and it still works really great. In fact, recently I've actually been using it quite a lot. I've been working with a fun mocap animation tool, so definitely stay tuned for that video tomorrow, on Monday. Also about Meta, they have recently released their latest AI model, Llama 3. It has a version with 70 billion parameters and another version with 8 billion. So far the results seem pretty impressive, it can be ChatGPT on a bunch of scenarios. They've also made a web portal where you can supposedly use it. However, it's apparently region locked, so I don't have access to it over here in Portugal. Meta has been following the interesting approach of making their AI models open source, meaning anyone can use it, so you can go ahead and grab it and use it in your projects. One topic that I would love to explore would be grabbing this model and seeing if I can somehow make it work using the inference engine of Unity, using Unity Synthesis. I saw a post on Twitter where they had this lemma model working with a Raspberry Pi, so if it works in there, then I assume it would work inside some kind of Unity game, either on desktop or on mobile. Apple has started allowing emulators on their store, and Delta has been added to it. This is apparently a really capable emulator, so if there's any retro game you'd like to do, then now is the perfect time to go play it. The games work great and can be combined with a controller. In terms of legality, you really just need to own the ROMs of the games that you want to play. You can play NES, NES, Nintendo 64, Nintendo DS, Game Boy, and a bunch more. Now let's move on to some gaming news. A game 14 years in the making is now out. It's called Harold Halibut. It's a very interesting game with a very unique visual design. Just by looking at it for one second, you can immediately tell that this looks like something quite different. Nowadays, if you want to stand out, you need to be visually unique, and this is an excellent example of exactly that. The game features a very unique stop motion style. The gameplay itself is a story rich adventure. Steam reviews are sitting at mostly positive, with some of the negatives being fetch quests and it's a little bit too drawn out. However, critics appear to love it, with lots of 9s and 10s across the board. Another interesting game that is finding quite a bit of viral success thanks to its interesting premise is called Rusty's Retirement. This is a game that you play at the very bottom of your desktop while you're doing other things. This feels really like the perfect addition to the idle game genre. Instead of playing on a second monitor, you can play literally at the bottom of your first monitor. I think this idea sounds really genius and I'm definitely not alone. The game currently has 6,500 followers, which likely means over 70,000 wishlists. So whenever this one does come out, it's bound to be a huge hit. And for something a little bit less jolly, Lately, whenever there's some kind of indie showcase, like the AAA Initiative or the Nintendo Indie World event, when these happen, there's always tons and tons of comments asking nothing but Silk Song. It's really awesome for devs of that game to know that people are insanely hungry to play the next title, but at the same time, it kind of sucks for all developers of all the games that are being showcased in all these showcases. It feels like their games get turned out because there's a vocal minority of people that just want one game and nothing else. So it's awesome to see the positive hype for Silk Song, but too much hype can also be a bad thing. Although the great news is that indie games continue to be more and more awesome. If there's anything you want to play in pretty much any genre, you can always find something great. And now let's go over to the quickfire rounds. Over on Reddit, there's a post questioning what exactly does $50,000 in marketing buy you? One person who runs a marketing agency responded on what exactly you could do with it. Although if you are an indie dev, keep in mind that this strategy is very high risk. Indie games are usually pretty cheap, so getting a return on investment in terms of advertising usually is quite tricky, unless you have a super huge budget. GTA 5 was apparently being filmed while in development, with the goal of making some kind of documentary that apparently suddenly has never come out. If you're a fan of game dev documentaries, I highly recommend the channel Noclip, they've got some really awesome ones. And the first one that I saw that I absolutely adored was the documentary on the making of the game Broken Age. It was part of the Kickstarter, I backed it just because of the documentary and I absolutely loved it. Then here's an interesting question, why do most solo devs keep remaining as a solo dev even after getting a massive hit? I believe the answer to this question is exactly the top comment on the post. It simply says how managing people sucks. Personally, I have no interest in managing people, so even if one of my games became a massive hit, I would not go out and hire 20 people and make a massive indie studio. I'm really a big fan of making small games, either completely by myself or in work with one to two other people. Then a very common post about all of the issues that you can find with doing indie game marketing nowadays and how it's really hard to reach people. Although in this example I would say it just needs a tiny few things in order to find success. But maybe I'm biased because I'm already a fan of the genre itself. I wrote a reply to this post with my marketing tips for this dev and maybe some of those might also be helpful to you. 
And to end on a positive note, here's a nice fun comedy call about life after 30. I really dislike like hearing people say that some like, oh, your 20s are the best years of your life and it's all downhill from there. My personal experience has been the exact opposite. I'm 35 right now and my life is 100 times better than during in my 20s. So if you're also in your 20s and you're struggling through life, just know it can get better. Nowadays, your 30s, 40s, and 50s can definitely be the best years of your life. All right, so that's the game dev report for today. All these stories are linked below in the description. As you can see, this is the new format that I'm trying out. Let me know in the comments if you do like this. If so, I might make it a more regular thing. So go ahead and hit the like button to let me know if you like this. Oh, and stay tuned for a really fun video coming out tomorrow. I've been playing with a really interesting VR tool that I think can be very helpful to indie devs. All right, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.